Immigration and policy have almost become synonymous with contemporary Germany. Discourses from Merkel's Via Schaffendas to the RFD's hostility are all shaping policy and application decisions. Per scholars like Wei Ming Kam's essay in Can We All Be Feminists? Immigration policy affects the people most vulnerable to exploitation and abuse. Even more so, females have been the minority in immigration numbers. Therefore, they are too often unrepresented in discourses or statistics. But their needs and their circumstances are often very different to men's. Experiences specific to women in the immigration system need to be discussed. This includes how policies may arguably discriminate against women. In this presentation, I will explore how two specific aspects of German immigration policy make it more difficult for a woman to be granted asylum. These two aspects will be the burden on women to prove their vulnerability and the attached asylum policy. The primary source for this presentation is the European Parliament's own study into the reception of female migrants in Germany. Firstly, the burden on women to prove and legitimise vulnerability based on gendered acts of violence makes it more difficult for them to achieve asylum. Yes, gendered violent acts such as sexual or physical violence are accepted as legitimate reasons for asylum. However, what is scrutinised is a woman's storytelling and the truth behind it. And there are two reasons for this. One is the threshold for proof that every applicant must make and the higher burden of credibility for women which is based purely on their gender. First, I will analyse the threshold for proof. Male migrants are more likely to be victims of political persecution. For this reason, males are far more likely to have a form of proof of such persecution. This may come in the form of documents or a paper trail, for example. In contrast, left with only her story, a woman often wouldn't have that type of proof for physical or sexual violence. She wouldn't have that type of proof for gendered acts of violence which women are far more likely to face. Some women may not even want to relive such experiences in vivid detail with facts and figures. This lack of evidence and detail are sadly often regarded as a lack of truth. Thus, women are disadvantaged by the standards of proof within immigration policy. This immigration policy adjusts to proof that men would statistically more frequently be able to obtain, but it does not adjust this burden of proof for gendered acts on women. This is a prime example of how the needs of female migrants have been obscured by those of men within the immigration system. And in this case, an equal burden of proof does not mean fair when it fails to adjust to situations uniquely affecting one group. Secondly, let us analyse the heightened scrutiny of women's credibility and how this also disadvantages them. This heightened scrutiny has been studied by scholars such as Leigh Gilmore. As part of her book, Tainted Witness, Gilmore examines the criteria for credibility in women's storytelling. She finds that the neoliberal stories of women's persecution is a cast of two-dimensional, 
unrealistic figures with rescue plots which elicit just the right amount of empathy. These ideas, criteria, define the right kind of story. In Gender Trouble, Judith Butler discusses role performativity and the violence of norms, and those ideas can be seen here too. Failure on the part of women to perform the right kind of story within the immigration system means failure to be a protection worthy subject. Failure to fulfill the storytelling criteria for caste and rescue plot is failure of an application. The high burden of proof and the high scrutiny that women face both have severe, very real consequences, as we can see in the article on screen. A black lesbian woman failed to narrate her experiences of homosexuality, harm and pain correctly. It simply did not meet the criteria and consequently she was denied asylum. The norms created around storytelling exclude her, disadvantaged her. This is a prime example of the burden of proof and the scrutiny women have to work against and the reception of women's stories and a gendered reception it is. Immigration policy may acknowledge gender-based violence, but the practice in reality seems riddled with bias. For the second aspect of immigration policy, I will be discussing how the attached asylum policy is lacking a gender sensitive approach in such a way that it may endanger women and discriminate against them. According to this policy, women can achieve asylum based on the status of a family member already residing there, i.e. in Germany. In 2017, this was the case for 230,000 women trading behind their husbands. However, these women often face tougher requirements than the men do who have gone ahead to blaze the trail. The women must be the ones to carry the burden of proving the relationship existed in their home country. This may be difficult for any woman to overcome who is fleeing violence or a crisis perhaps, but consider the increased difficulty if the reason for persecution in the first instance was a non-heterosexual relationship. How would you prove that? A certain type of woman, like the lesbian woman Hope in the article previously mentioned, would automatically be disadvantaged and locked out at the border. However, in particular, I'd like to focus on the concerning long-term dependency this policy perpetuates between women and male partners. The woman's status becomes not only secondary to, but also dependent on the man. And where there is power, there is also the possibility of misuse. For example, the scholar Catherine Briddick has examined the relationship between sex discrimination and immigration law in the UK. Female migrants most frequently receive the overseas domestic worker visa and are unable to change employers, creating a dependency on said employer. Briddick has concluded that this type of dependency creates the ideal conditions for exploitation and physical and sexual violence. Here, we can directly see a correlation between the policy, the visas, and increased gendered acts of violence. Although this is research completed in the UK, these conditions could easily be reproduced within the German immigration system. Women may end up in more abusive relationships, exploited by the men who have determined their application success. Of course, I'd like to add, the attached asylum policy has enabled numerous successful applications. However, any policy which increases the likelihood of women finding themselves in situations of abuse needs a more gender sensitive, inclusive approach. And this is exactly what the EU Parliament's FEM Committee calls for too. In conclusion, 
conclusion, I have analysed how the threshold for proof disadvantages women coming forward with stories of gender violence, the higher level of scrutiny they are held to, as discussed by scholars, also disadvantages them since they have to overcome more to be seen as credible. Additionally, I outlined how the conditions of the attached asylum policy can leave women stranded and in dangerous situations or relationships. It is undeniable that scrutiny and thresholds of proof are important in a well-functioning immigration system. Nevertheless, women can only be supported suitably if there is a gender-sensitive, inclusive response to their needs. So far, their needs have been overshadowed by the majority of males in the system. However, female migrants are especially vulnerable to abuse and exploitation, so the discussion of the intersection between gender and immigration is a matter of life and death. Immigration and policy have almost become synonymous